today was the type of day that makes you feel like you have absolutely no idea how to catch fish. Spent seven hours on the water, I saw one bass. And that one bass happened to do a little bite, but that, that was it. Other than that, I didn't see anything. That's why I'm here now. Just gonna wrap it up, shoot a video, and head on home. It was a hot day, slow day, just the lake itself. You can just tell sometimes. You get on the water, you can just see it. The birds are sleeping, the carp are flopping everywhere. It just feels ugh. You go to a couple of your key spots, you don't even see fish, you're like, oh man. Seems like there's a pattern to that. When the carp start flopping, just wrap it up, dude. Wrap it up, beat, go on home. With all that uh, complaining done, I wanna talk about something that I feel like is rarely discussed. Maybe it is in publications that I'm not looking at, but what I will call bass cultures. What I mean by bass cultures is the distinct behavioral patterns of bass on different bodies of water. Their overall attitude, how they move around, what they do, why they do it, I don't pretend to know, but you can see it, it's obvious that every single lake has a distinctive bass culture. Now some might cross over from lake to lake to lake, but when you take into consideration that these bass populations in landlocked lakes are completely isolated, it would be shocking to think that they don't develop completely different behavioral patterns. Now I bring this up because we've all heard the adages of like, okay, you know, bass do this, bass do this, bass do this. Those are good rules of thumb, but I don't know if it necessarily applies as much as we might think. I mean, yes, bass still have their basic needs. That's a no brainer. But what I'm calling in question is the ways they choose to achieve those means. And just look at uh, across the world in general, just the, all the different cultures and through time, we can look back on history and see how isolated groups of people developed different cultures. There were very few crossovers, there were, but for the most part, the isolation causes them to adapt different behaviors to achieve the same goal. And I don't think bass are any different. I mean, I, that's giving them a lot of credit, but I, I absolutely don't think they're any different. Maybe, I, maybe I've been living under a rock and people long know this and discuss it a lot, but I don't think I've ever really heard people talk about overall bass culture, bass behavior. And I think that would actually help a lot of guys out with their fishing and specifically trophy bass angling. You really gotta understand the fish on your body of water. And I'm not gonna pretend, dude, I get stumped all the time, all the time. Scratch my head, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? It's, it's absolutely shocking, but there are certain behaviors and patterns that I've picked up that is unique to this body of water or on other body of water where those fish don't do the same thing. Let me put it in context a little bit. I think a lot of us will understand that certain lakes, the fish just seem more aggressive. Is there some reason, some environmental factor that causes those fish to be more aggressive? Or are they an isolated group that the dominant trait has been that aggressive behavior has worked itself to be the dominant trait for success? I don't understand if there would be a good argument against what I'm putting forward. And honestly, I think we need a lot more research done on it, but who's gonna put the time out there? I mean, I'm not gonna do that, but you can do anecdotal evidence of like, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, like bass do this on this lake, blah, blah, blah. Let's just throw another wild one out there. Let's say 
the bass in a certain lake start to pick up on a beneficial behavior that is eating released fish. Now I haven't seen that behavior anywhere else but one lake where trophy bass will actually follow boats around waiting for them to catch fish and then be released and as soon as that fish is released BAM! From what I understand that lake had a die off and I bet you that trait, that behavior is now gone from the pool. Those bass that had that trait and they were successful in it would have passed it on to their young. A lot of those bass died off so I bet you that trait is gone now from that lake. But it did exist at one point. That's a completely different culture or behavior, however you want to say it. They've unlocked something that gives them an extreme benefit and it's very unique to that specific body of water. I'm sure bass are doing it in other places in the world, but in general, that's not a behavior that bass will do. Even beyond just those specific behavioral patterns that are for isolated populations of bass, which I 100% believe in without a doubt, every lake that is isolated, it's had its own time to grow, mature, away from all the other population that bath is gonna come up with completely distinctive behavior to achieve the same goals. But what's even more nuanced in this is in that population, you're gonna have multiple different groups of bass doing different behaviors to achieve the same goals. Now I think an obvious one, the guys have spent a lot of time on the water, they notice one that is blatantly obvious. You can catch fish that are what I'll say fish eaters and then you'll catch fish that are maybe more terrestrial crawdad eaters and I say that and I could just be talking out my rear end here without knowing the whole biology behind it and maybe those fish this changes throughout the year but the fish eaters tend to have much sharper teeth much more toothy I would think that's a benefit to grab onto the prey. Whereas that's not a benefit for crawdads. Now there could be an argument to say they are toothy, then they go on a crawdad chew and those teeth start to wear down. That's totally possible. I haven't seen the studies that say that is what's happening. I tend to think that there are multiple different groups in a lake that have their primary way for forage. So one is a crawdad eater, one is a shad, trout, whatever, a fish eater, and they might cross over from time to time. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've, <laughs> I've caught fish with mice in their throat that are out on bait, you know, busting on shad and stuff. But it was still a toothy fish. But I, I think that's another thing to consider when you're targeting trophy bass. What bass are you targeting? I don't wanna harp on it too much, but this stuff truly fascinates me. Talking about the behavioral characteristics of bass in isolated groups, isolated populations. And that goes from a specific lake to the specific groups of fish in that lake. You got those dock monsters and they hang out at the dock. Then you got those main lake fish that are like, ah, I never venture over there, bro. I, I got a good spot here and I just post up. They're obviously different looking fish. I can spot a dock fish from a mile away. Like it's that obvious. Those are different fish in the same lake and they have obviously different behavioral patterns. Now, the trippiest thing is when we're talking about the isolated populations, landlocked largemouth bass, is you could have mirror images of a lake separated, let's just say by two miles, but there's no contamination between the two. There's no crossover between the two. If those lakes are left on their own and just go, I would argue that you could almost guarantee 
that those two populations of bass are going to behave pretty different. The initial genes were the exact same, but over time, they're going to find successes and failures and adapt to those situations and they're going to do them differently and so their behavior is going to over time change and maybe even eventually come back together. Something that guys should consider when approaching a lake or even approaching a lake that they fish all the time. Maybe take a step back and kind of look at the bigger picture and pay attention to those patterns that you have noticed before and go, is there something there? Like striper lakes. Are the largemouth preying on small striper that are caught? That might be a specific behavior that's here in Southern California and other places where when the the small schooling striper bite goes nuts and they're just murdering bait fish and there's anglers everywhere catching them ah, having a blast and you got giant largemouth chasing those fish in is that a behavior that they're adapting to because it's going to lead to greater success for them and if they're having success doing that they're more likely to pass on those traits it's learned behavior I don't know how it gets in I know there's some research that's talking about like genetic memory starts to get passed down but if that's the case and that ends up being a reality every success would start transferring to the offspring and those offspring would start to naturally do that on their own not even maybe understanding why and then you're gonna get that outlier that maybe once they beat that one thing to death this outlier does something else and becomes more successful and then now we've kind of you're hitting forks in the road and then you're coming back together and you're sprinting out anyways I get enthusiastic of talking about this stuff because I think there's a lot there I think there's a lot of opportunity if people were willing to collect the data I know there's a uh, bass stocking facility that are actually working on isolating out different groups of bass to get the most aggressive best eaters and ones that pack on the most pound basically they're trying to achieve the greatest thing ever super aggressive bass that pack on the weight have those giant frames and they're doing it all by isolating out the populations and breeding specific winners with other winners and then going okay okay let's take these fries that one's not that aggressive that one's not those ones are gone there are people doing the research and noticing that you can weed out behavioral characteristics or physical characteristics all by preference so there's no reason to think that it's not naturally occurring on a grand scale that we're looking at it from 5,000 feet and going oh I don't know bro but if you took that huge step back and looked at it from 50,000 feet you go oh okay yeah these are totally different than those and this and this and this and this and this and this anyways let's just leave it at that Take it in consideration. Start thinking about the stuff that's going on on your lake, other lakes, what they have in common, what they don't have in common. You know, and see if you can start to unlock certain behaviors that others might not see and you'll be able to capitalize on it. That could be as simple as, hey dude, these fish over here, they get real aggressive when this happens. I don't know why, but it's a behavior that they do and it doesn't make any sense according to all the knowledge and the, the stuff that we see in bass publications and all this stuff. It makes no sense, but they're doing it. Take that stuff into consideration. Just because it's not widely known doesn't mean it's not a reality. It's happening. We're just not seeing it. That's my take. And it's unique to every single lake out there. Hopefully I didn't talk in circles too much, but I gotta wrap it up. Gotta be off the lake in five minutes. That means I gotta pull the poles up and haul back on over to the marina. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe there's something I missed. 
of, of course there's something I missed, but I'm trying here and I'm trying to put my thoughts out there without sounding like a robot and writing it all down. I'm just trying to freestyle it. But at any rate, like I always say, we appreciate the support. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that bell notification so you get the emails. You get the emails for the YouTube channel. Head on over to our website, subscribe to our email newsletter. If you haven't already, that way you'll get notification for all Working Class Zero product drops. And until next time, I'm out. I gotta go.